spaces. So these are really um, uh, uh, done in a way to sort of try to get back to the, the clam fritter as something that is actually delicate. Yeah. Now in terms of history, these fritters are a fried food and they speak directly to the deeper African American histories of Eastern Shore food ways. In fact, almost, uh, I'll tell you a, a story from the 1640s. There's an uh, inquest uh, about the death of the Dutch boy Sneer. This is in 1640 on Church Neck. Uh, and he's found dead in a, in a cornfield where he'd been sent to be a scarecrow. That was his job. Um, and there are all these questions about misadventure. But at the end, the English neighbor goes into the quartering house where the Dutch boy Sneer did dwell with the African, the Spaniard, and the Englishman. And what you're seeing right there is, in fact, my first question is, what language did they speak? Yeah. And the second is, what did they eat? Well, we know from uh, just a few years later uh, in the voyage of Colonel Henry Norwood is that they're already eating dishes in the 1640s that are a synthesis of Native American, African, and European traditions. And that is set at an incredibly early date. Among the things that are, uh, uh, that are out there uh, then are these fried uh, uh, fritters or little pancakes. Uh, and then we're serving this with a, a hominy slaw. And this is uh, made from bloody butcher corn that is grown by uh, Bill and Laurel Savage up uh, near Painter um, on the way to Quimby. And it's a strain of dent corn that dates to the 1870s uh, and has been kept in circulation. And so they've made the, uh, so we, they gave us the corn, um, and then Amy uh, Brandt oversaw the making of the, uh, of the whole hominy. Um, and that is going to be garnished with um, uh, two things, flash fried silver sides, those little bay anchovies, um, and then peat crabs. <laughs> the crabs. Now, That's think so about amazing. this, is it in the 1800s, in the, in the Gilded Age, is you could go to a fishmonger's and buy a pint bottle of peat crabs, and they were considered a delicacy that was often made with an omelet. Yeah. So all of that gets paired uh, with a um, Church Creek steel chardonnay, and as I vacate these premises, as John I'm sure will uh, <laughs> tell you for the next 20 minutes about how, how great it is. I'll tell you how great You're it is. There. That's the Cliff Notes version. Um, but it is, the Church Creek wines are such an extraordinary expression of this place. But John can, will, will tell you far better than I could ever do. Thank you. I was afraid I would have to follow Bernie. <laughs> I was on the road this afternoon. I called my wife, Nels, and I said, gosh, I hope I don't have to follow Bernie. <laughs> well, I'm leaving. So, okay. You're on your way. <laughs> so my name is John Wenner. I'm the winemaker in the owner of Chatham Vineyards. This is my wife, Mills, and it's hard to believe, but we're uh, close to 20 years farming here on Virginia's Eastern Shore. And um, I was very careful in the early years not to um, come to too many conclusions too quickly because, as a lot of you know, uh, there's a saying in the wine business, the fast way is the slow way. And that's why there's such a turnover with people getting in the wine business because it's a very slow, subtle business. And it's, it's actually what I really love about the business. Um, it's a very humbling business, but I do feel after 18 years of farming at Chatham, I do feel like I'm starting to get a real sense for what's going on. And we have these vines that are almost 20 years old, and for Virginia, um, that's starting to um, 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 be an older vineyard. And it's uh, very exciting. I'm also looking at putting in future vineyards. But at 18 years old, the roots are starting to go very deep into the soil, uh, typically about 12 uh, feet down. So the vines are going through layers of ancient shell and sand and clay, and actually the roots are now into the iron ore, um, which is the beginning of gravel. And so um, I believe, and from what I've read, that the wines um, start becoming more expressive of place. 
because in the early years when we were farming, we were making very approachable, very nice wines, varietally correct, but they weren't um, as interesting. And I think now that we're farming much deeper down the roots, we're able to get all sources of uh, mineral deposits and a high influence of calcium from all the ancient oyster shells that are in our soil. Um, so I find these wines are becoming very site expressive. And it's interesting because I just spent this week in Washington, D.C. at a beverage conference and talking to other winemakers from Charlottesville and Northern Virginia. And one of the winemakers made a very interesting point and that is, you know, in France, they've spent 2,000 years farming and understanding their terroir. And um, in California, California's had so much success in the last 60 or 70 years. Mm -hmm. They're at the pinnacle of American wine, and they've done it. They're producing beautiful Cabernet Sauvignons. And it's very humbling to be in Virginia because we are learning as we go. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, if I'm lucky, it would be my lifetime, but I'm sure it's going to be generations of people just, just learning the subtleties of this business. And, um, and one of the winemakers, he's a very well-known wine, winemaker in Virginia, Jim Law, said, I'm just pleased to be part of developing and understanding terroir in Virginia. And what's so interesting about Virginia is the diversity. And we're finally at a stage now in Virginia, we're not being compared to California, but we're being looked at <coughs> as Virginia and our soils and our diverse climates, whether we're in Charlottesville or whether we're in the highlands of Virginia. And so that brings me to my point with this wine. I thought it was appropriate to start with this wine because uh, of all the wines that I produce next to the Cabernet Franc, I would say this is uh, the most sight expressive wine. Um, and I, I, I'm okay with telling people this is a wine I do very little to. This is a wine that's truly made in the vineyard. Um, it's pressed very lightly, fermented in stainless steel, so it's a very clean, sanitary environment for fermentation. But what we're truly trying to capture is the essence of Virginia's Eastern Shore, and more specifically, Chatham. And so with this wine, you get the minerality. 